Testing for endotoxin contamination is mandatory in pharmaceutical production and often required in the life sciences and medical research. Endotoxins, which are breakdown products of gram-negative bacteria, such as E. coli, trigger severe physiological reactions. For years, the LAL assay using blood from endangered horseshoe crabs was the only method for endotoxin detection. Endolyzer is a new method for detecting endotoxins in pharmaceutical and biological products. Hygloss developed Endolyzer to overcome the limitations of LAL without using animal products of any kind. Bacteriophages, commonly referred to as phages, are viruses that infect bacteria such as E. coli. Phages enter the bacterial cell by first binding highly specific proteins to lipopolysaccharides on the cell's surface. Lipopolysaccharides act as endotoxins, and so the phage proteins possess endotoxin binding properties. The use of such phage proteins makes Endolyser unique. Each Endolyser kit contains reagents for 192 tests. The reagents are Endolyser plates pre-coated with phage binding protein, wash buffer, endotoxin free water, endotoxin standard, assay buffer, enzyme recombinant factor C, substrate, binding buffer and cover foils. Start with the preparation of the endotoxin standard solution. The exact volume of endotoxin free water required for dissolving the endotoxin standard is indicated on the label. Add the water to the endotoxin standard bottle. Close the bottle tightly and vortex thoroughly on a test tube shaker for at least 10 minutes. The endotoxin standard solution is ready. It has a defined endotoxin concentration of 500 EU per milliliter. For the dilution series, pipette 900 microliters of endotoxin free water into each test tube. Be sure to use endotoxin free glassware for all standard dilutions and samples. Avoid using plastics. To prepare the first dilution with an endotoxin concentration of 50 EU per milliliter, add 100 microliters of endotoxin standard solution. Vortex for two minutes. Repeat one to 10 dilution steps to prepare further concentrations as required. The standard curve consists of concentrations of 500 EU per milliliter, 50 EU per milliliter, 5 EU per milliliter, 0.5 EU per milliliter and 0.05 EU per milliliter. In most cases, Endolyzer enables the analysis of undiluted samples. For a highly concentrated sample or a particularly complex sample, a dilution of 1 to 5 in endotoxin-free water is recommended. Remove unused strips from the microplate. Put these in the resealable aluminium bag provided and store at 2 to 8 degrees.
pipette 100 microliters of each preparation into their respective wells. Duplicate determinations are recommended. The standard dilutions, blanks, and samples. Samples can be spiked in order to determine the validity of the assay. The endotoxin concentration of the spike should be in the range of the expected endotoxin content of a given sample. To spike the samples with endotoxin, add for example 10 microliters of the 50 EU standard to the designated positive control wells. Having added the spikes, cover the plate with a lid and mix for one minute on a lab mixer. Now it's time to start the endotoxin binding in the wells. This process cannot begin until the binding buffer is added. Add 20 microliters of binding buffer to each well. It is important to pipette carefully to avoid cross-contamination. As soon as the binding buffer is added to the wells, the phage protein coating on the well surface is activated. The binding of endotoxin in the sample begins. As with a classical ELISA, the target analyte endotoxin is selectively bound to the surface of the pre-coated wells in the endolyzer plate. Seal the wells with cover foil. Incubate the endolyzer plate with continuous mixing. At a constant temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Set the clock for 90 minutes. Remove the cover foil. Pour out the liquid by rapidly inverting the plate and dashing the liquid into a basin. Pat the plate dry, top down on a clean paper towel. Don't knock the plate on the bench, since this can influence the results. Also avoid backsplashing of liquid while pouring it out of the plate. The wash procedure enables a complete removal of the sample matrix. This ensures accurate results. Add 150 microliters of wash buffer to each well using a multi-channel pipette. Avoid touching the walls of the wells with the pipette tips during the dispensing. Should this occur, change pipette tips. Remove the liquid again. Repeat the wash procedure twice for a total of three washes. Carefully pat the endolyzer of plate dry top down on a paper towel. The endotoxin can now be detected. Prepare the required amount of assay reagent using the substrate, enzyme and assay buffer. Place the endolyzer plate close to or directly in the fluorescent microplate reader. Add 100 microliters of assay reagent to each well. Close the reader and wait one minute in order to allow the temperature to adjust to 37 degrees Celsius. 
any endotoxin will activate the zymogen form of recombinant factor C, which finally generates a fluorescent signal by the conversion of a substrate. Make the first fluorescent signal reading at time point zero and incubate the plate at 37 degrees for 90 minutes. Then make the second endpoint fluorescent signal reading. Subtract the time point zero values from the endpoint values. Using calculation software such as Gen5, the endotoxin concentration is determined by standard curve analysis. A four-parameter logistic function is recommended for modeling the endolyzer standard curve. Alternatively, a linear model can be used. Finally, the endotoxin concentrations in EU per milliliter are obtained, ready for interpretation and reporting. Endolyzer overcomes the limitations of homogeneous assay methods. It provides excellent endotoxin specificity and sensitivity without dilution of samples. Detection of endotoxin concentrations ranging from 0.05 to 500 EU per milliliter. A heterogeneous assay format that enables the complete removal of sample matrix and ensures accurate results. An endpoint fluorescence assay correlating to all quantitative LAL methods. A solution free of animal products and as such a relief for dwindling horseshoe crab populations.